Um, so I mentioned before that we were going to have a look at a uh, superior way of doing ambient occlusion as opposed to just using the default one in the post process. So to do this, we're going to um, generate our mesh distance fields. So to do this, you go to edit, project settings, scroll down to rendering, and simply tick on generate mesh distance fields. So when you do that, the project will ask to restart and then it will generate all the distance fields for these assets. If you want to, um, once you've turned that on and it's done its build and stuff, you can actually um, view that by going to one of these here. Visualize here and then you've got mesh distance fields and you can see how they're, how they're kind of looking. So you've got, kind of got that outline around your assets, it's all right. As you can see, it doesn't work on dynamic assets. So uh, yeah, it's not gonna work on on anything dynamic. So if you have too much dynamic stuff in your scene, like for instance, I would probably take some of these out from the final, probably need something back on there, um, from the skeletal mesh so that these and the rails would be generating um, ambient occlusion at the very least. Um, so any of the animatable parts of this would be, would be um, a skeletal mesh. Uh, so we can also just go back to use defaults. So in order to use our um, mesh-based ambient occlusion, if we just search for our skylight, select it, you have to make sure you're on movable skylight, which of course we are. And then if you scroll down here, you'll see you've got um, distance field ambient occlusion. And basically, as long as you've got this set to movable and in your scene, then it's already gonna be generating it for you. So in order to see it, if we just go to um, visualize here and then turn on distance field ambient occlusion, you can see how this is looking straight away. So you can see we're getting some funny artifacts where um, we've got the uh, skeletal mesh and things around that model. Um, so you can see it's a pretty good result there. So we've got this, let's have a look at some of the settings. So um, the higher this setting, the more expensive it's gonna cost. But I also notice you start getting odd artifacts if you start putting this too high. So kind of anything between kind of 500 and 2000 tend to work okay. But 1500 in this case gives us like a, a nice result. Um, so we've got minimum occlusion. This setting, just if we just put that to one, we shouldn't have any occlusion, although we can't see it in this visualization. You can only see it here. Um, sorry, in your actual viewport, so. There you can see the occlusion pop back in and one, it goes away. So obviously we wanna kind of leave that off. Now you can mess around with these. Um, they do recommend that having one in your, in your occlusion contrast is a good kind of default value, but you can always mess around with these and just see if they do anything. Um, see if you prefer how it looks with that. Values are the one bright in occlusion overall without losing contrast. So, Again, just have a play with that and see if there's anything you like with that setting. But that's kind of it really. So yeah, we've got our ambient occlusion set up in the scene now. So yeah.